Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to Learn Math with me, Brian Sapinski. And we find ourselves here once once again um, with a rebroadcast of a live stream that we most recently did. Uh, if you if you were here for our original attempt at doing this live stream on Friday, May eighth, uh, we thought it went well, but uh, the reception from YouTube said otherwise once again. So. This is going to replace that video as yeah. as we did before. Uh, Brianna is here uh, you, here on the side to. You just <laughs> got mad because. Who kn who knows thing. who knows why? But and this you time to mad. avoid any problems, we're actually going we're pre-recording this, so we're going to record the video that way. This way, yeah. we know that the video is nice and fine, no problems, no worries. But we're going to recreate all the stuff that we we're did so that day up. and. Get everything nice and set up so you can see exactly what we were trying to do. You can see Who's it clearly, that? and we will. Who's that? Who's what? Who's that? You can't see anything. Who's that little red blob over there? Oh, okay, fine. And... Get. Okay, all right, enough for you. Okay, all right, enough, 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 enough. enough. Okay, chill. All right, we got to get moving. We're short up. Yeah. We got to do this, and we got to do this fast, okay? Because <laughs> we're doing this in the in the midst of other things and stuff like that, okay? And hopefully, our next live stream will work properly. All right, okay. To start to start things off, okay. I'm gonna begin with what I'm gonna begin with the topic. Okay. All right. Leave them there. Him. Her. Whoever. Him. Leave the ladybug there. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So. I'm gonna start the. I'm gonna start this. Uh, this take two of this live stream with what the original intent of the of the live stream before was. Since we had called it our Mother's Day episode, and we're gonna still consider it that in a sense or whatever, um, we were we were starting to have a discussion. Um, okay, we were talk. We were talking about there was some interesting data that I had been given uh, prior to. Uh, prior to the broadcast, and to to present that data pr uh, properly, we were presenting it in the form of a circle graph, or as it is sometimes referred to, a pie chart. Mm, okay. Pie. And, and I want to begin with that with that data properly. Oh, I could draw a pie with, chart. Which which time? Oh, no, here. I could draw a pie yes, chart. Yes, I I know, I know. You want to draw your pie your pie chart like you did last time, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, while she does that and gets silly or whatever. See your pie chart. Well, I thought you were going to do your pot, your actual pie no, gag. I'm going to draw another pie chart like this one. Okay. Well, that, that's the example of how the. Wait, wait, wait. Move, move over so they can see it. But that's the example. But move over. They can't see. Now, here's so the, the real way you do a pie chart. This is actually pie. Yes, haha. -ha. But you see, but you see the idea is mm -hmm. that you're taking no, the entirety. You're you're taking this the. This is the parts with grape, uh, blueberry jam. Yes, I got it. grape. Really? No. Blueberry anyway, filling. So, uh, so here, so here is the deal. So the i, so the idea, yes. so the idea here is that we take an established p, we take a an established set a set of data it is broken up in, is broken up into several uh, wedges each rep, each representing a certain percent of the entire data the idea is that each wedge will be appropriately uh, proportionally sized to represent what percent of the data that it actually stands for and all of that so and keeping in mind that being that we are dealing with a circle we want to recognize that the that the full circle of any data is how many degrees, Brianna? 160. No, wait, 160. I mean, I mean, ah, ah, 360. 360. Thank you. Okay. This is a so we duck. need three. This so we need duck. 360 degrees in order in order Say to hello represent to that. Duck. Okay. Can you? I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. Duck All right. Just so. To say hi. So here. So here's the data that we that we were using again, fitting in with the with the Mother's Day theme. There was some data that a co a colleague of mine uh, sent uh, sent us with in relation to Mother's Day, where it was talking about, um, and this was actual statistics from the uh, 
you know, from the, the U.S. Census Bureau. It can be it can be found online. Everything it was talking about in the year 2014. It was uh, according to the census data. It was indicating when did you know, at what age were pe were uh, women becoming mothers for the first time? And here was and here was the data that was discovered. It was told to us that 22 percent of the of the women that were surveyed in terms of being first time mothers did did so before the age of 20. Okay, the majority, 37 percent, said it happened between the ages of 20 and 24. We had 24 percent. It would happen for the first time between 25 and 29, and that would include my wife, Andrea. Um, then we had 12% who their first time as a parent was between 30 and 34. Then we had 4% between 35 and 39 as, as first time moms. And then the remaining 1% where it happens at age 40 or above. Okay, so that was the theme of. That was the theme of our of our pie chart there. Okay, so from this data now, Hi. we're going to take Sorry. all of these percentages and we're going to get them and we're going to relate them to the 360 to determine how how big of a wedge we have to draw within the circ within the uh, circle graph itself. Okay, so being that we're taking percent of a number, that means that means that, like, let's take the one percent for instance first, just to make it easy. As we, as we've explained, one percent as a decimal, Brianna would be what? Zero point zero one. Okay. And since we're taking percent of a number, what operation do we do with that and the three hundred sixty? To get to fit. Divide. No, no way. Percent of of we always said was what operation? Multiply. Multiply. Okay. All right. So. So here's where we have to do uh, where we're multiplying with decimals. So we know that if if there were no decimal involved, we know that one times 360 would be 360. But then as we look at the two numbers, how many total decimal places do we see between the two numbers? No, wait, how many decimal places are here? Two places. So your answer must contain two uh, two digits to the right of the decimal. So therefore, this fir the first wedge here to represent the one percent would be three point six zero degrees. Now to properly represent that in our circle chart, okay, you need okay you got to establish the center point. Okay, you have to establish a starting line just somewhere just. Get a get a radius drawn in the circle like we have here, okay. And then now and then you're gonna need you're gonna want a protractor of some kind to be able to use on this. Now this is gonna I'm gonna admit this is gonna look a little clunky because uh, you know because I'm gonna be trying to keep this away. But as you've drawn angles before, okay, we put the center over that. We line the black lines up with the protractor right there. Now let's see, three point six degrees. That's a very thin angle to do there but it's going to be somewhere about right there and then you just and then you have to draw your straight edge connecting through that point like i said this is a very thin one but i can't help it it's one percent what am i supposed to do so so we have that so that little thin body right right there represents the one percent that are 40 plus okay being that as it may all right so now we do a similar multiplication for each of the others, multiplying times 360, converting each of these to decimals, and we go so on from there. So for instance, the four the four percent would be if we go if we go with that, four times for, yeah, four times three hundred and sixty would be one thousand four hundred and forty. But again, two decimal places here. So you got two decimal places there, so it'd be fourteen point four degrees. Okay. And then when you when you draw the next one, you have to put the line. Don't start back at the beginning. You have to match it up with the with the next line that you drew. So this way you could circle all the way around the around the pie. So fourteen point four degrees would be somewhere around the pie. Yes, exactly. So fourteen point four would be somewhere about there. So we draw the line that. Okay, there that is. Okay. 
okay so four percent at 35 to 39 don't worry, as these, as these get larger, you could actually write the information in the wedges and stuff like that. Okay, so you have that. Okay, so 12% so twelve then. Okay, so that would be 12% as a decimal, Brianna? 0 0.13. Okay, so then when we multiply that in, okay, we get 4,320. Again, two decimal places there. Two decimal places here, so 43.2 degrees. Okay, so again, we line it up this way. Let's say 10, 20, 30, 40, and a little more beyond that, so it's somewhere about there. So now we got a nice, sizable more wedge that we could actually write the data into. So there's 12% for the 30 to 34 bracket. Okay, and so then 24%. As a decimal, Brianna, 24%. Zero point two four. Okay, so 0.24. So that's twice as much as the 12. So here, double four, three, and two, Brianna. What digits would you get? You double four, three, and two. Double four. Four. Well, okay, or the two becomes four, the three becomes six. And the four becomes eight. Okay, so 86.40 degrees. So let's see what that comes out to. So we line it up. Here's 80, 85, 86 is kind of about there. So it'll be somewhere in that neighborhood. So we get a nice, like that. Okay, nice big wedge there. So 24%, 25 through 29. Okay, and then we've already got two wedges left to, left to go because once you draw one, the size of the other should line up. Okay, so 37% is a decimal. 0 0.37. Okay, this one, this one I'm gonna need some calculator for because I could get away with the other ones off the top of my head. 0 0.37 times 360, we get 133.20 degrees. Okay, so let's see where this one goes. All right, so we line that up, 133, 10, 20, 30, so it's about there, give or take, somewhere in that neighborhood, so down it, so down it comes, somewhere, somewhere in that neighborhood again, trying, trying to hold, trying to hold this, because, because I have a problem that it's like, I don't like to hold it flat against the whiteboard. I've had bad experiences in, in my past classes when I've tried to hold hold something against the uh, the board like that with a protractor because then it wants to stay like slit you know flat against the board. And it's then it's like see then it's like it's so tough to pick up. You see the example? So it's it's crazy. That's that's why I'm trying to hold hold it out in the air like that. But let me just make sure it. Uh, and uh, lines up properly. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's somewhere in the vicinity there, give give or take. I think it's a little shallower than that. I don't know that. Okay, so somewhere in that neighborhood. But anyway, there's your thirty-seven percent for the twenty to twenty-four bracket, and then the remaining twenty-two percent. Let's just get the. So there's the point two two. Let's just get the official measurement on that, multiplying it. We get about 79.2 degrees, um, which, I mean, that's what's supposed to come out. So I'm just double checking something here. Yeah, that's the 86. That's the 43. Okay. So, I mean, the last one should line up to the amount of degrees that you were intending for it to be. My, mine's coming out a little larger than what it should. See, I had it the first time. Um, I had, I had it right the first time, and now it's come, now it's coming out a little cr little crazy there. Okay, so see if you got if you got to make adjustments, if you see that your measurement is a little bit off, you can uh, you can make fixes. It takes some it takes some practice to make sure that it uh, that it measures out the way that it the way that it's supposed to. Whatever. So don't get nervous if you don't get it totally right right the first time experience yeah. will experience will show you the way but okay it's somewhere in the neighborhood for right now again also like it like I said ignore artistic imperfection with uh with these and stuff like that but 
in general, there there Wait, is your, I, there's your circle graph. There there is your pie chart to represent all of our first time mom data. All right, and in general, that that's how you do it. Just take know your percentages, multiply each one by 360 degrees to determine to determine what what measurement you have to use with the protractor to get that particular size for the pie chart. And that's all there is uh, is to it there. Experience and show. I got it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> human. Okay. All right. So, so that that's our mother Mother's Day information there or whatever. Okay. So we'll start with that as the as the simple piece here. Okay. So that that was one of the things that we that we did originally. Okay. Now, uh, during our original attempt at this at uh, at this during the live stream. I had a lot, I had uh, several of, I know several of my geometry students that came by asking for some, uh, for some trigonometry help or whatever. So we'll revisit and I'm going to put it all in order uh, based on level of difficulty this time. So you can see exactly from beginning to end what things uh, that they, that they want us to do here. Okay. So. We'll start, with, we'll start with the basics here. And again, let's, uh, as we've been doing in the past couple of live streams, let's fly the official national flag of... So yes. So that we can, uh, as we've been doing, it's become our little running gag here. So let's just maintain it as we see it there. Okay. Now, to start with the, with the simple examples, that uh that were given i had somebody that was asking me a question with regards to being able to come up with the the sine cosine and tangent for both of the the two acute angles so we'll mark them as a and b here and you know based on the measurements of the three sides knowing that you have to identify the opposite side the adjacent side and the hypotenuse okay so as an example, one of the ones I gave looked like this, where one leg was five, one leg was a radical 11, and the hypotenuse was a six. So the question that was being asked was to get, was to get all of the, the different things. So, so first, focus on angle A to get sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? Sine as... As the national anthem of Sokotoa says, requires opposite and hypotenuse. Okay, so who? So which which of the three sides, Brianna, is opposite from angle A? As you open, as you spread out and open up angle A, what what segment is captured at the other at the other ends? What segment? I should put I should put the C in there. No, no, no. See, no B is an angle, not a side. Oh. That's a mistake I see a lot of people make when they're trying to figure out opposites within a triangle. A point is always opposite a segment. Yeah. No, no, see, C is an angle too. You want a segment, you want a line. Not a, C is a point, B is a point. I need, uh, I need a line. Squiggly line, is it? That's a, well, that's a square root, that's a radical sign. Okay, it's, oh. the, erratic, it's the radical 11. Uh, 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 okay, over, and then which one's the hypotenuse? Wait, which one is the hypotenuse? The longest side of the triangle. Oh, uh, the slanted one, the six. Okay, so you have the six there. Okay, now for the cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so which one's the adjacent, Brianna? What's the only one we haven't used? Five. The five. Okay, and again, the hypotenuse is still. The hypotenuse is still what? Say it. No, no, no. Wait, the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. H. What's the longest side? The six. Yeah. Okay. And then tangent requires tangent requires opposite over adjacent. Again, the opposite is which one? Which one you on? Radical eleven over the adjacent, which is. Which one's which one's adjacent? Which one's next to the egg? The five. Okay, so you have that. So those three were okay. But then when we got to the other ones, then when we focused on angle B, 
we had, well, the first two were okay. Keeping in mind that with sine and cosine, okay, now when you focus on the other acute angle, the one you call opposite and the one you call adjacent switch places. So now, Brianna, with B, we said, because now with B, we said that which one was the opposite now? Where radical 11 was opposite from the A, which one's opposite from the B? Again, open up and which line does it open to? No, 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 that's a point. That's a point. I need a line, a line. What measurement is the line? Five. The five, yes. Okay. But the hypotenuse is still what? The opposite and adjacent changed, but the hypotenuse is still the... No, no. Which, again, the hypotenuse is the longest side. Six. The six. The six. Okay. So because of the change of opposite and adjacent, the cosine of one is equal to the sine of the other. So again, now for cosine of B, which one is next to the B now? Which one is next to the B? Squiggly line? Radical. No, his ra new name is squiggly line. The hypotenuse is still... Five? No, no. Five's, five's not the hypotenuse. Six? Six is the longest side. Okay. But it was where we got to the tangent that things got a little messy. Because now, where tangent A, where tangent A was up, was was radical 11 over 5. Now, because the opposite and adjacent are switched, how does the tangent B fraction read? Instead of radical 11 over 5, this one says... B over. No, wait. Turn it over. 5 over... 5 over radical 11. And here was where the problem existed, because, because when, you write, when you write fractions, okay, there's certain kinds of uh, numbers that you can't have at the bottom of a fraction. One of them in terms of real numbers is you can't have a radical down there. So to get around that problem, what you need to do is, what you need to do for this is you need to execute a, pro a process known as rationalizing. Essentially, what it, what it amounts to is this, okay? Anytime you have a fraction in a real, in a real number system, the only, the only thing you can see in a, in a fraction is you can only see a whole number, okay? You, or an integer or whatever. You can't have any other kind of number existing down there. So what ends up happening is this. To turn this into a whole number, it's, what we want is instead of a radical 11, we want it to show just a whole 11 like that. But I can't just change it magically to this and say, oh, that's fine. You can't do that. What you actually need to do is you're going to need to, just as you've done with any other fraction in your life, you're going to have to multiply the numerator and denominator by something in order to keep it the same value. And what we showed, what we showed in previous live streams with regards to perfect, uh, to perfect squares and stuff is that when you have a radical, how many how many of the same number, Brianna, do you need to multiply together to make, to make a perfect square? Two. Two. Okay, so here's one radical 11. If you then multiply by a second radical 11, 11 times 11 would give you 121, and the square root of 121 is a whole 11. So that's what you want to see there. Now, the trick then is... So since you multiply by radical 11 at the bottom, you'd have to multiply by radical 11 at the top because you have to keep both ends equal. And then you can't multiply the whole, the outs, this whole number on the outside by this number on the inside of the radical. You can't mix those together. So all you can do is just smush them together side by side. And this would be the rationalized fraction for tan of B, 5 radical 11 over 11. There may be some circumstances, now this one is not one of them, but there might be some circumstances in other places where, where the, the, the number on the outside of the radical on top and the whole number at the bottom can sometimes be reduced and you could play with it that way, but not in this case because 5 and 11 have no common factors. So we, so we leave it at that and that's all fine and good. Okay.
So that was the first thing that we did. Now, I then had uh, somebody else in, in the room. I had somebody uh, asking me a question about trying to solve for the measurement of one of the sides using trig based on having another side and an angle. So let's suppose that we had one of those circumstances. Okay. Okay. So same same tri same triangle here, and I gave yeah, I gave triangle. I gave this as an example based on what somebody had in the uh, in the chat room. I gave that there was. There was an X down here, there was a 15 over there, and we had a 35 degrees as an angle of elevation sitting right there. Okay, Look, I'm so. Elevated on the set. Okay, could you get down here for a second? Because <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm getting a favor from you to make. Get down here. Really? Yes. Very Ooh, important. What is it? Very important. For, uh, will you get over here first? So, like. Oh, oh, the triangle can be a nice young What? Which side is the X? Is that the opposite? The is that opposite the thirty-five adjacent to the thirty-five, or is it the hypotenuse? Because oh. look at where the X is in relation to the thirty-five. Adjacent. It's adjacent to it. Okay, and where's the fifteen? Right here. Is it the opposite? Is it opposite to the thirty-five, or is it the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse. Okay. So, following Sokotoa, then adja no, adja adjacent, no. adjacent and hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is which one? A H. So would it be so it'd be sine, cosine, or tangent? Wait, which one's was it again? Wait, you got sine, cosine, and tangent. Which one needs A H? Cosine. Okay, so this is a cosine equation. So you have cosine of your angle of 35 degrees equals, and then the adjacent's got to go over the hypotenuse. So which one goes on top, the x or the 15? Okay, so x over 15. And because the x is on top, that means we can get rid of the 15 on the bottom. It's a division of 15, so how do we get rid of it? Okay, so we multiply it over to the other side by times. So we end up calculating 15 cosine of 35 to get the value of x, which would be approximately, if we, if we punch that in real quick, 15 cos 35, we get approximately rounded to one place about 12.3, and that would be your official measurement for that. Okay, now the next type of problem that somebody else asked uh, during the course of the stream was probably the most complicated one uh, that they've seen involving trigs or and you're probably going to think the same thing so let me set the the stage here it involves a diagram that looks something like this okay they had two right triangles that were overlapping each other in this fashion they both used the same right angle in the same place they both used the same uh, height and the person's object was to try to find the height of these two right triangles. The only information that they gave aside from that was they gave the two angles of elevation. So, for instance, the, the smaller, the triangle with the smaller base had a 48 degree angle of elevation. The one with the longer base had a 36 degree angle of elevation. And at the points of those angle of elevation, the only other detail that they gave was that those were three feet apart. So the object was to try to find the height. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the problem here is the way that this, this diagram reads right now is that there is not enough information to be able to solve for it. However, with the assistance of one extra variable, we can create some equations that will help us ultimately get to this height of x. And it involves, so we're, it involves putting a measurement on this because without this measurement, you don't have enough to do a trig equation for the small triangle, and you need to know the measurement of this entire base to, eat, uh, to even get to x to use the long one. So you need something here to be able to add to the three feet because the three feet only covers this little bit. It's not the whole thing. So we're going to create a temporary value y to represent that. 
So from that now, we could create two tangent equations for this because the x is opposite both the 48 and the 36. And this base, whether just the y or the entire y plus 3, it makes it adjacent. So here are the equations that we were able to make. The first one said that the tangent of 48 on the inside equals opposite over adjacent, x equals y. Now, just as we did before, when we go to solve this again, how do we get rid of the division of y? You multiply it. Okay, which we put that in the front, so you now have y equals, or y tan 48 equals x. Now, for 36, the same, you can make a similar tangent equation where it's tan 36 equals x over, and now you need the entire segment from right angle to tip, which means segment addition means you have to add those two. So you have y plus three underneath. And this, just like the y over here, also has to get multiplied over to the other side. But you don't just multiply one piece of the whole thing. When you're multiplying with an addition or subtraction sense, you have to move the entire thing over to the other side. So this whole thing comes over, and it now says this, parentheses y plus 3 with a tan 36 equals x. Now, so you've got those two equations equaling x. So what? The problem is you can't do anything more with these yet at the moment because right now both equations have two different variables in them. That doesn't help you. To truly be able to solve any equation for a variable, you can only see one unique letter. But in doing what we've done so far, we've got a little bit of a strategy that we could use because, and, and Brian, you can answer this uh, fairly enough, because if x equals this sentence and x also equals this sentence, what does that tell you about those two sentences? They are the same also. So that means that we can take these two and make an equation that says this, the y tan 48 equals the y plus 3 tan 36. Since x equals both those things, that means they equal each other. It's just substitution. We're, so we're replacing the x's with both of those other sentences. And now, all we see in this equation are y's. That we could solve for because now there's only one unique variable. But the y is in two different places. We're only going to truly be able to solve if we only see one single y at the end. Here's how we're going to get there. The first thing is this y plus 3. We got a tan 36 on the outside. We do a distribution like this. So tan 36 times the y, we get y tan 36 plus. Then three times the tan 36, so we have that. Okay, we didn't do anything with this yet. So that comes out there. So we have that. Now, I still now I have two separate y's. My next step is in order to get down to one single y, I want to make sure that both of the terms that have a y are on the same ends of the equation. So that means I want to take this y tan 36 and I want to cancel it over to the other side of the equation. Since this is since this is a positive y tan 36, that's going to mean to get rid of it, I'm going to need to do what? Divide. To get rid of a positive, I want negative. I want a negative. So that means I'm going to subtract the y tan 36, the entire thing gone over to here. Now, here's where you got to be careful. cuz I see so many uh, so many kids do this. First of all, I've got the 3 tan 36 left over here. That's fine. Now, here's the mistake I see a lot of kids make the first time they're trying to do this. Don't make this mistake. I see a lot of people, if they say, oh, why tan 48 minus why tan 36? They'll, for, they'll, they'll forget about the tans altogether, and what will they do with the 48 and the 36? What will they write? Yeah, and so they'll, so they'll say, why tan what? Well, yeah, which, no, 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 that's not it at all. You can't do that because this tan, this is not a whole number 48 and a whole number 36. It's not plain numbers like that. It's, you got to remember, it's the tangent uh, ratio of 48 degrees and the tan ratio of 36 degrees. Right now, we don't know immediately what those are, so we cannot physically attempt to subtract them. 
So the only thing you can do is just write this from top to bottom, write it out side by side like this. For the moment, that's all we're going to do. Now, I still see two y's. Here's how you get it down to one y. Remember at the beginning when we did the distributive property to multiply this one thing into both of those? Now we're going to do exactly the opposite here. Here we're going to undistribute by removing a common factor from both from both of these. So here's the thing. As we read these, Brianna, what do you see? What factor do you see appear in both of these terms? The y here. Well, well, remember, tan is attached to this angle and tan is attached to that angle. So Tan is not a, a factor y? in and of itself, but the Y is. So we can remove the Y from both of them. That means there's a tan 48 still here minus a tan 36 here. So now you have this. Now, since Y times all of this equals this, if I want to get just Y, how do I get rid of the multiplication between y and divide. this? You divide. And once again, you have to divide kind of like how we multiplied the entire sentence over when we did this. You have to divide not just one or the other, but the entire sentence here. So the entire tan, 30, tan 48 minus tan 36, and we bring that over, and all of this when we calculate it, will give us the what the measurement of y is supposed to be. So let's see real quick, okay? So it's gonna help if you have a graphing calculator to do this because, uh, or, or some type of mega scientific that will let you punch in the entire uh, sentence into place like, like this. Okay, I'm just showing you the example. This is not done yet, but I'm just showing the example of what I'm talking about. So minus yeah. 10, 36, bup, bup, and there's the ends of it. So we get a measurement of approximately 5.68 when we take a look at that, or 5.7 here, we'll call it. So about that. Now that's y, so, that, so that's this measurement right here. But we were looking for x the whole time. So what could solving y do for us? Ah, but here's the thing. Remember this equation up here? Before we started doing all this, it says that x equals y tan 48. So now that you know what y is, now that you know that that's the 5.7, the 5 if you multiply this answer you just got times a new tan 48, that will give you the value of x in feet, and you're all set to go. So here's my advice. Don't use the rounded answer use the answer you've already got and just throw in after it a times tan 48 and you get the official answer of about 6.3 feet. So both of these triangles are 6.3 feet tall and there's your set right there. It's a long process but if you take it step by step and understand the rules of doing all the substitution you get it. It cut. This is gonna be another one that comes with experience, comes with practice. Just take your time, and I swear you got this. All right. So now that we've gotten all the technical business out of the way, this was a Fun and Games Friday episode. So let's get to our game time. And this game time is one that did not involve any necessarily a mathematical skill, but it did involve numbers and a little bit of a uh, puzzle and logic strategy. And where did you go? <laughs> you disappeared on me. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> so here's, here's the way that the game essentially works. The first thing to start, come on up here. <laughs> come on back. Losing your footing, she is, because we're not sitting on chairs this time. All right. So the general object of the game first is to rand randomly select a number from 6 to 12. That's going to determine how many numbers you place in a row. And each, and each round, cha change it up. So that this way, the strategy of the game uh, can be altered a little bit from round to round. Now, I'm going to start in this round, and then Brianna's going to go, and we're going to take turns in this. 
all it's going to involve is each of us crossing out one number at a time to start so for example let's say with me going first let's say i choose to cross out my personal favorite number the four okay now Brianna is now going to cross out a number of her own of her choosing okay now she chooses to cross out the five now that's actually good that she did that because here is the essential rules in the game because we're not just crossing out numbers for no reason the object is that in order to win you have to you have to make the opponent make the mistake of crossing out a number that is going to cause three numbers in a row to be wiped out so for instance if i right now were to cross out either the three or the six i would lose so it would be obviously it would be in my best interest not to cross out one of those two numbers and in her case the that same thing would also be true so so you have to be very selective in the numbers that you choose so i'm going to cross out for instance i'm going to cross out the eight over here as best i can she crosses out the one okay so there's no danger at the moment but then let's see what happens here as i cross out the nine and brianna then wisely crosses out the two and at this point she is now trapped me in a situation where i have no ability to win because the next move that i would make would guarantee that three in a row would be crossed out because if i cross out the three you actually have five in a row blacked out one through five so you can look at it this way this way or this way three in a row if i cross out the six th there's three in a row there with four five six and if i cross out the seven there's seven eight nine so well, you try to help me with that so at this point well with, well nine. the thing is with proper strategy in this game you can see that one person has an advantage over the other one depending on how many numbers there are available in the set and stuff like that and if you make the the proper and correct clever moves now there are two ways you could play this game that's what we just demonstrated is the easy way to play the game now let's take a look at the more challenging or hard way to play it that requires you to look at the numbers a little more closely suppose that now for this one okay we will change the the number of uh, the list of numbers for uh, for this particular set so we did nine numbers and that we randomly chose that before we started this so for this next one again for what we randomly chose let's put 11 numbers up this time now again you randomly draw or decide with a dice roll or whatever it is that you want to do yeah pick a number anywhere from from 6 to 12 those are the those are the nice numbers to be able to play with here so we randomly chose 11 so that's what we're doing here all right now Brianna's going to start this time now in the hard version of this game the same object of trying to avoid crossing out three in a row still exists but this time where the hard rules come in is that three in a row now does not strictly have to be three numbers straight uh side or by side like four five six so now any three numbers that are evenly spaced out with each yeah. other you can't do that either so numbers like two four six you couldn't do or One, three five or 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 two five eight that are spaced three apart from each other two six ten that are four apart from One, each other three, okay five. So any combination of three numbers that are evenly spaced apart are off limits. If you cross out a number that causes any kind of three in a row like that, where the numbers are evenly spaced apart, whether it be one, two, or however far they're split apart with each other, any kind of arithmetic sequence, you lose. So you have to be very careful. So let's see what happens this time as we play. So Brianna will start by crossing out the first number. Okay, so she has crossed out the six. All right, so let's see what I want to do. Okay, so I am going to cross out, I'm gonna take out the nine. Now, before we go further, see if you could identify what number is off limits to her. What number should she not cross out in order to avoid losing? So what, okay, she picked the two. All right, what number should she not 
What number should you not have crossed out? The three. The three, because then three, six, nine are all three apart from each other. She would have lost. Okay? Now, by cr her crossing out the two, for me, the ten is off limits because two, six, ten, they're all four apart from each other. Four. It's, <laughs> it's tough holding up four fingers when, you, when you're trying to lock a marker at the same time. But that's no good either. All right? So I play next there. So what if I want... Okay, I'm going to choose a five. Okay, now that eliminates a few different numbers here from the list here. So you got to watch very closely. So now Brianna will go next as long as she avoids one of those numbers. She is fine. And she did. Okay. And, and you want to know something? Brianna has just won. Can, all right. Here, here's what I want. Here's, okay, Brianna. I want you to show I want you to show why, okay? By crossing out that one and me realizing the mistake that I made, okay? What um okay, what are the combinations? So you like do okay, one, so all right. 6 11. Okay, yeah. 1 6 11. If I crossed out the 11, I would lose this way, okay? okay. If I crossed out the 10, how would I lose? Um 2 5 Wait, wait, two, well, all right, well, let's get that one, two, five, and what number would that lead to? From two to five, and then how many steps does that jump? Nine. Wait, wait, wait not the nine, uh. Wait, from two to five is how many steps? Three. So three steps after five would be, would be the what? Eight. The eight, so two, five, eight, I would lose that way, okay. So how does... So how does the ten? Well, here let's get the, let's get the easy one. How does the seven lose? Five, five six, six, seven. Okay. How does the four lose? Four, five, six. Four, five, six. Okay. Or or even two, four, six. That would lose two. It doesn't matter which way it loses. The bottom line is it loses. Same deal with the three. The three loses a couple of different ways. How does the three lose? The three loses two different, uh, actually, the three loses three different ways that I could say. Three, five, seven? Well, well no, wait, wait, seven, at, at this exact moment, no, three, five, seven would not be a loser, but how does three lose at this moment? Three, five, eight? No, no, no. Huh? No, besides, eight's not covered at the moment. And besides, three, five, and eight are not evenly spaced. But here, look at the beginning. What happens at the beginning? Oh, one, two, three. One, two, three. And the other way you could lose is if I crossed out the three, I also have a loser by via, by way of one, three, five, or even by way of three, six, nine. I can't do that either. So by crossing out the three, I lose three different ways, <laughs> you know? But do you see how the 10 loses? I said it a couple of minutes ago. Do you yeah. guys see it out there? The 10... No, 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 no. Ten. The ten and the two, and what's and what's halfway between them? Because these are eight apart from each other. Halfway to eight is four. Four. So what's four away from two and ten? Six. The six. Yeah. So two and six are already blacked out. If I cross out the ten, I lose. So, so you can see it right there. By all, those, by all those different ways, none of the remaining numbers are safe, and Brianna has won once again. So there's a lot you got to keep track of, but, but it's a very clever game in terms of its strategy and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a, very, it's a very nice, quick and easy puzzle challenge to you know, play with your family and friends, and I hope you try it, I hope you play it, and I hope you enjoy it. So, and, and I'll be honest with you, this actually... I actually saw the this game on a, on a website literally the day before this past Friday's uh, live stream. So it was it was very creative when when I stumbled upon it, and I thought it was interesting enough to present to all of you. So try it, play with your friends, and I hope you enjoy it a lot. And I hope you enjoyed everything that we presented in this reproduction of Friday's very uh scrambled live stream which will which this will now replace and I hope that if and again if you enjoyed as always please make sure to 
hit the thumbs up to show that you like it. Subscribe to the, uh, to this channel, youtube.com slash as as you are here now. And at the same time, please make sure to tune into our remaining live streams for the remainder of this week and for next week. Um, because we are going to continue right up until Memorial Day weekends with the 22nd, where we're really going to make sure we have uh, a big blast to uh, uh, to end things off. So, another on top. Aside from that, just uh, stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe, every everyone out there. And on behalf of me and and Brianna, we will see you very soon for more live streams and other assorted math action <laughs> math action where the heck did that come from here at my channel learn math with me brian sapinski take care we will see you soon bye